I share God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. And I accept it as my function now. I share God's will for happiness for me. And I accept it as my function now. And I accept it as my function now. I share God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. Well, thank you all so much for joining me here on the banks of the Current River outside of uh, Donovan, Missouri. And uh, I'm, I'm recording about three days ahead of you. So it's actually on the 11th, on the 8th that I'm recording, or I'm, a, I'm recording this on the 8th, but you'll be seeing it on the 11th. So today's the, the solar eclipse. And I wanted to come to the totality area. We're gonna go down the canoe thank you for joining me in studying A Course in Miracles. We're reading from the, the Foundation for Inner Peace publication of A Course in Miracles here on uh, Thursday, April the 11th of 2024, Lesson 102. And I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks. Can you kind of see the current river through the brush there? I'm right on the banks. <laughs> You kind of off the off not down right by the water up on a hill i share god's will for happiness for me you do not want to suffer you may think it buys you something and may still believe a little that it buys you what you want yet this belief is surely shaken now at least enough to let you question it and to suspect it really makes no sense it has not gone as yet but lacks the roots that once secured it tightly to the dark and hidden secret places of your mind. That's a nice, nice, isn't it? Today we try to loose its weak and hold still further and to realize that pain is purposeless, without a cause and with no power to accomplish anything. It cannot purchase anything at all. It offers nothing and does not exist and everything you think it offers you is lacking in existence like itself. You have been slave to nothing, but be you free today to join the happy will of God. You've been slave to nothing. Be you free today to join the happy will of God. For several days, we will continue to devote our practice of, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for several days, we will continue to devote our periods of practicing to exercises planned to help you reach the happiness God's will has placed in you. Here is your home and here your safety is. Here is your peace and here there is no fear. Here is salvation. Here is rest at last. Begin your practice periods today with this acceptance of God's will for you. I share God's will for happiness for me and I accept it as my function now. Then seek this function deep within your mind, for it is there awaiting but your choice. You cannot fail to find it when you learn it is your choice and that you share God's will. Be happy, for your only function here is happiness. You have no need to be less loving to God's Son than he whose love created him as loving as himself. Besides these hourly five-minute rests, pause frequently today to tell yourself that you have now accepted happiness as your one function, and be sure that you are joining with God's will in doing this. <laughs> wow, our, our job as um, followers of, um, what would you say, followers of the Christ, is to be cheerful, 
to be happy. Of course, that just bubbles forth from, from practice and peace. Okay, and we're, we're armed with the power of forgiveness so that we can keep ourselves uh, in a happy state regardless of what comes our way. We can look past appearances to the truth that only love is real. Everything else is my own imagination that I can, a dream that I can wake up from. Okay, well, let's go. So, so today, be sure to tell yourself at the top of every hour, at least say, I share God's will for happiness for me, and I accept it as my function now. And if you can, try to take five minutes in that hour. And if you can't, well, at least try to keep the idea alive at the top of each hour or throughout or sometime during the hour, okay? I share God's will for happiness for me, and I accept it as my function now. Okay, in, in our text reading, we're in chapter 12, the Holy Spirit's Curriculum. And we're ready for Roman numeral five, the same curriculum. And before we read it, uh, I found on holidays and observances, just a few things that are going on. Barbershop Quartet Day, uh, eight track tape day. Well, that's a thing of the past now, isn't it? Uh, Richard Berry's song, International Louie Louie Day. Uh, you know, about a lovesick sailor who uh, is telling the bartender is uh, his, um, uh, how much he misses his uh, his girl back home. Uh, National Alcohol Screening Day. You know, if you're drinking more than what you need to be drinking for uh, your own peace of mind, well then give it to God as a gift. Uh, or at least give, the, um, give everything to God as a gift. And you know, he may even tell you it's fine to drink a little alcohol, but give everything to God as a gift is my point. National Pet Day, uh, Submarine Day, uh, the U.S. Navy uh, introduced their first uh, submarine, the Holland Number no. 6, on this day in 1900. 124 years we've been having submarines. World, uh, world of course, they, there were submarines before even that, but that was the first one that was uh, <laughs> considered worthy as a naval instrument. World Parkinson Disease Day. And then in our edible landscaping, and I found all those on uh, holidays and observances. If there, there's a couple, there's a few more there that I didn't mention. I'll put them in the description below though. Or you can just go to holidays and observances. Uh, and this is the, um, the Hachia Asian Persimmon. And this is the, these varieties we'll be talking about next, or next week or so, will be the ripe only when fruit becomes soft varieties. So the Hachia Asian persimmon, Hachia is a large top-shaped fruit, up to four inches long, glossy, deep orange red, and beautiful as it matures, soft when ripe, rich and sweet, usually seedless, ripens in the fall, mid-October through November, a vigorous tree, upright and spreading, up to 12 feet tall, easy to care for. This is the soft type persimmon grown in California, sold in markets and supermarkets across the U.S. in the fall. A dried fruit delicacy in Japan. Red fall leaf color, space 12 foot circle, self-fertile, zone 7 through 8. So a little bit warmer climate one than what we do good here in the Ozarks. Zones seven through eight. Some of the some of the Ozarks might be okay for that in protected areas. And then in Permaculture for Beginners by Carrie Mitchell, we're still on chapter six, water, uh, and we're the sixth infrastructure that she talks about is irrigation. And of course, irrigation's been around for centuries and was a groundbreaking agricultural technique in its in its first days trying to save the water and then delivering it to the needed plants is what irrigation's all about. And there's three that she mentions in this, uh, in this section. Wicking beds are beds that are built over gravel layers and then piping throughout the gravel so that the water wicks up in through the gravel into the plants. Uh, the other kind are drip lines which can be installed to deliver water to the surface for gardens or 
for individual plants. And you might consider like gray water, uh, delivering it in a pipe, maybe underground, to specific plants. And so they just automatically get watered uh, without you having any care. And then there's also Ola gardening, which is to bury an unglazed clay pot in the ground. And, and then you keep that pot full of water and the water soaks out to the plants around it or, or a plant near it. And uh, anyway, do your research about what type of irrigation would best work for you. I'm, I'm really encouraging people now to plant uh, swales to catch the water as it drops down the hill. But I would say plant swales, build swales and build them on the contour of the hill and then just make them, you can make them any size you want, but that will tend to stop the water and you can walk on, on, you know, on the uphill side and that'll get flooded. And, but, but then you work up your soil and then you go downhill and you build another swale on the contour lines. So I, I consider that to be an excellent way to irrigate. <laughs> okay. The same curriculum. And of course, let's keep in our mind today, I share God's will for happiness for me, and I accept it as my function now. The same curriculum. Only love is strong because it is undivided. The strong do not attack because they see no need to do so. Before the idea of attack can enter your mind, you must have perceived yourself as weak because you attacked yourself and believed that the attack was effective. You behold yourself as weakened. No longer perceiving yourself and your brothers as equal and regarding yourself as weaker, you attempt to equalize the situation you made. You use attack to do so because you believe that attack was successful in weakening you. Oh, the two-edged sword of uh, believing that attack is useful. Then you then feel like you're being attacked, which totally destroys your invulnerability uh, or the, the belief, the idea, the, real, the reality of your invul invulnerability. Paragraph two, that is why the recognition of your own invulnerability is so important to the restoration of your sanity. For if you accept your invulnerability, you are recognizing that attack has no effect. Although you have attacked yourself, you will be demonstrating that nothing really happened. Therefore, by attacking, you have not done anything. Once you realize this, you will no longer see any sense in attack, for it manifestly does not work and cannot protect you. Yet the recognition of your invulnerability has more than negative value. If your attacks on yourself have failed to weaken you, you are still strong. You therefore have no need to equalize the situation to establish your strength. You will, paragraph three, you will never realize the utter uselessness of attack except by recognizing that your attack on yourself has no effects. For others do react to attack if they perceive it. And if you're trying to attack them, you will be unable to avoid interpreting this as reinforcement. The only place you can cancel out all reinforcement is in yourself. For you are always the first point of your attack. And if this has never been, it has no consequences. And why are you the first point? Because you've accepted what's not real, that you can be attacked. So you're all, just the fact that you accept that before you attack someone you, is, is an attack on yourself. Paragraph four, the Holy Spirit's love is your strength, for yours is divided and therefore not real. You cannot trust your own love when you attack it. You cannot learn of perfect love with a split mind because a split mind has made itself a poor learner. You tried to make the separation eternal because you wanted to retain the characteristics of creation, but with your own content. Yet creation is not of you, and poor learners do need special teaching. Five, you're, you have learning handicaps in a very literal sense. <laughs> There are areas in your learning skills that are so impaired that you can progress only under constant clear-cut direction provided by a teacher who can transcend your limited resources. And that word teacher is capitalized, referring to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He becomes your capitalized resource. He becomes your resource because of yourself you cannot learn. 
The learning situation in which you placed yourself is impossible. And in this situation, you clearly require a special teacher and a special curriculum. Poor learners are not good choices as teachers, either for themselves or for anyone else. You would hardly turn to them to establish the curriculum by which they can escape from their limitations. If they understood what is beyond them, they would not be handicapped. Paragraph 6. And I might just mention, you know, everything's reversed in this world. Those who seem to be really successful at, like, like, like in, in war, for instance, uh, or any kind of uh, anything, that is actually the reverse of being a good teacher. Uh, to believe in attack and to teach attack and to be really good at attack. <laughs> it's upside down way of looking at it. You do not know the meaning of love, and that is your handicap. Do not attempt to teach yourself what you do not understand, and do not try to set up curriculum goals where yours have clearly failed. Your learning goal has been not to learn, and this cannot lead to successful learning. You cannot transfer what you have not learned, and the impairment of the ability to generalize is a crucial learning failure. Would you ask those who have failed to learn what learning aids are for? They do not know. If they could interpret the aids correctly, they would have learned from them. 7. I have said that the ego's rule is seek and do not find. Translated into curricular terms, this means try to learn but do not succeed. <laughs> the result of this curriculum goal is obvious. Every legitimate teaching aid, every real instruction, and every sensible guide to learning will be misinterpreted. Since they are all for facilitating the learning, this strange curriculum is against. If you're trying to learn how not to learn, and the aim of your teaching is to defeat itself, what can you expect but confusion? Such a curriculum does not make sense. This attempt at learning has so weakened your mind that you cannot love, for the curriculum you have chosen is against love and amounts to a course in how to attack yourself. And that word um, uh, learning was in quotes because this isn't really true learning. Let me read it again. This attempt at learning, which was in quotes, has so weakened your mind that you cannot love. For the curriculum you have chosen is against love and amounts to a course in how to attack yourself. A supplementary goal in this curriculum is learning how not to overcome the split that makes its primary aim believable. And you will not overcome the split in this curriculum for all your learning will be on its behalf. Yet your mind speaks against your learning as your learning speaks against your mind. And so you fight against all learning and succeed, for that is what you want. But perhaps you do not realize, even yet, that there is something you want to learn, and that you can learn it because it is your choice to do so. <laughs> Getting things kind of inverted, straightened out. Paragraph 8. You who have tried to learn what you do not want should take heart. For although the curriculum you set yourself is depressing indeed, it is merely ridiculous if you look at it. <laughs> is it possible that the way to achieve a goal is not to attain it? Resign now as your own teacher. This recognition will not lead to depression. It is merely the result of an honest appraisal of what you have taught yourself and of the learning outcomes that have resulted. Under the proper learning conditions, which you can neither provide nor understand, you will become an excellent learner and an excellent teacher. But it is not yet so, and will not be so until the whole learning situation, as you have set it up, is reversed. And the last paragraph for this section, 9. Your learning potential, properly understood, is limitless because it will lead you to God. You can teach the way to Him and learn it, if you follow the teacher who knows the way to him and understands his curriculum for learning it. The curriculum is totally unambiguous because the goal is not divided and the means and the end are in complete accord. You need offer only undivided attention. 
everything else will be given you, for you really want to learn aright, and nothing can oppose the decision of God's Son. His learning is unlimited. His learning is as unlimited as He is. Okay, well, let's get our perception straightened out and ask the teacher who knows what we want for help. I share God's will for happiness for me, and I accept it as my function now. Let's be sure that we do that. Let's, let's don't wait for happiness. Let's accept it as our function now. And if for some reason you're finding you just can't seem to be happy, that's when you need to ask for help. Be still and quiet. Remember, our power comes from our quietness. I share God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. And I accept it as my function now. And I accept it. God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. And I accept it as my function now. I share God's will. God's will for happiness for me. I share God's will for happiness for me. And our word for peace is from Chile, and it's uh, from the Mapundungan people, and it's Uvchen. So, Uvchen be with you. <laughs> I share God's will for happiness for me, and I accept it as my function now. Uvchen. <laughs>